The following video contains discussion about serious topics like depression and suicide. This is not a joke. Viewer discretion advised. I sometimes uh, jump around the line and it's hard to tell how serious I'm being or like what the joke is. This is not a joke. I would never joke about a topic like this. So this is a video like I've wanted to make for a while. But obviously, um, it's a serious topic and you don't want to fuck around and you want to do a proper job, but you don't have time and like, you don't, like I'd rather, it's like a, I hate don't talk about, so I, I feel like it's better to just talk about it than not talk about it, make the video than not make it. And, um, so we're just going to YOLO it. We've got a like crappy script and some pictures, but, um. And, like, this can be interesting to, like, both, uh, like, therapists, psychologists, and depressed people. Like, I feel like I know a lot, but you can still always learn. Uh, people think about things in different ways. And, like, going back to, like, don't talk about it. It's like, what does school teach you? School teaches you if Mary has fucking 56 watermelons and three of them fall off the back of the truck, what time... Were you supposed to arrive at school? What? <laughs> like, you don't learn anything useful, like what to do when you hit rock bottom, or like what systems exist to help you get out of it. So this is just me talking about it. So we've branded ourselves as like the depressed man. And like, you might think that it's a joke, or like, what are you even depressed about? But it's like, I genuinely didn't think I'd ever get out of it. And it was bad. Like... I don't, I don't necessarily feel I need to go into my personal, like, issues, like, it, because it doesn't really matter, like, and it, it creates this, like, um, toxic, like, my depression is worse than your depression, like, it doesn't really matter if it's affecting your ability to live, like, that's all that matters, like, it, Everyone's got their own problems, everyone's raised in different ways, different socioeconomic, etc, etc. And if it's preventing you from living, that's all that matters, right? You can't like start judging or whatever. And, and at the same time, like, it's going to be tougher for, for, depending on your wealth. Like, it's, it's easier to be depressed in a Mercedes than under a bridge in the rain, right? And, like, I don't have a solution to that other than there are systems that exist to help you, government programs, and these days it's, mental health is becoming a, a massive thing. So you have to find them and you have to put effort into finding them. And even, even in, like, America with private health insurance, there are, I believe there are systems, you just have to find them, and obviously no one's going to tell you what they are, where to find them, etc. So, um, the, the biggest thing is, like, you have to admit it to yourself, like, you remember, like, the show Breaking Bad, where, uh, like, the late, late season, he's doing the therapy, and, like, um, Jesse's like, I'm the bad guy, I came here to sell you drugs, like, it's just a dumb show or whatever, but like, him identifying that he's the bad guy, like, that's a step in the process, like, you can't fix something if you don't know what the problem is, and you have to admit it to yourself, like, I didn't know that I was depressed until like 10 years later, 10 fucking years, like, I can look back now, and like, reflect on situations that I was in or like what I was thinking at the time and and like I had no idea like you're just a kid I was 15 and your brain it tries to hide it from you like uh, we're also pretty autistic like so it's important that you have to admit it to yourself like if you think there's there's it's not a problem like you're not gonna be able to, like, do anything about it, and just to go back to, um, to more personal things, like, I just, like, it, as life in Australia is tough, man, like, the, I joke, like, um, oh, we could put our fucking favorite Australia meme, it's like, 
a map of the world and like percentage of the population that are criminals and like everywhere is like per 1000 it's like 50 20 or whatever australia it's a hundred thousand out of a hundred thousand is criminal because we're all british convicts right like but i can go back and like i just grew up surrounded by kids that just never had a chance like it's just fucked up man like and like you can look at the state of like news in australia and like most of it's fucking child abuse and all this shit like you, you can kind of, like, get a sense of, like, like, I just grew up in a different universe, and my, my parents are autistic as well, and, like, there's benefits, but there's also negatives being raised in that environment, but, again, it doesn't really matter, like, it's not about, like, whose depression is worse or whatever, and uh, depression, it, it just takes up, it takes over your entire thought process to the point where you can't even try to fix it like it 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 just compounds on itself and it gets worse and worse until there's no chance that your brain's going to think any other way and this is something we'll get to with these pictures and um my opinion on antidepressants and certain things people say about them that it's like masking the the problem <laughs> but like and people say oh it gets better like do you think it can get better when your brain has zero percent chance of doing anything except hating everything and everyone like that's that's like the the stages that you can be in and like <laughs> again like like i don't really care i can say whatever like here's some really bad it's like someone will tell you oh just kill yourself here's some really bad advice this is it's not really a joke but like kill yourself like bro i already tried man like it's not that easy like the the body doesn't want to go and like i was autistic like i thought about it i i thought i didn't think i would fail but I was autistic that I didn't want to leave a mess. So severing a major artery was out of the question. And I think that... like, So that's why it's bad advice. If someone was like at that level where they, they wanted to try and they, were, they didn't care about leaving a mess, like... Um, there it's like bad advice. But like that... Trying and failing was also a catalyst for me, you know, like, I, I sort of believe in, like, um, like, uh, like, there's a, there's, like, a purpose or whatever, like, you have a purpose, and, um, things happen for a reason, you know, all those, like, um, those memes, like, everything happens for a reason, or, like, it means things things happen. There's no coincidences. Things happen for a reason. But that's like, I'm not religious, but I do believe in that sort of like, like fate-ish type things. Like, so like that would be some insanely bad advice. Oh, kill yourself. Have you tried? Like, it's like when I hear like 12-year-old or 13-year-old or 7-year-old killed themselves, I think like, what did you do, man? Like, it's not that easy, man. Like, have you tried it? Like, <laughs> but um, that's getting insanely dark. And then there's other issues like, how much time did you have? Who's going to find you? Yada, yada, yada. And then uh, we already talked about this a bit. We've got this like script here. Like, your family situation, if you're in a shithole situation and you have no money, like, it's a massive issue. I can't deny that. Like, and there's no, like, easy answer to that other than there are systems to help you. And I believe even in America, you have to fi find them. Here in Australia, you can get free sessions with a psychologist. Private is obviously insanely expensive, like $400 an hour or whatever. But I do believe, and these days, the whole mental health thing is growing. So then, um, 
again, like this can be my opinion. Like I believe I know a lot, but there's still so much to learn and everyone has their own ways of looking at things. So this can be useful to both depressed and psychologists. So then we've got our defining pictures. So we made these incredible pictures. We just make sure they're on the screen. So like this is you or me and this is like how your brain can react to a situation, right? Like, I'm going to give it a try. Like, I, I'm not depressed. I'm open-minded. Then, like, the next stage is, like, someone offers something, but you're like, I don't like it. Or, I don't like them. And then, obviously, escalating more. I hate it. I hate them. Like, and this, it also comes down to, like, personality type. Like, I'm I'm a critical, um, like analytical type person. So I hate everything and everyone. So like your own personality is going to affect this. And then there's things like I don't really like the the definition of um, introvert versus extrovert. Like it it works to a point, but like I can be I I would be considered an introvert but I can be extroverted with people that I like or people who also like the thing. You know what I mean? Like you, you can talk to someone about something that you like, but if it's someone you have nothing in common with, like you're not going to be able to talk to them, right? Or you just don't like each other. People just, it just happens. People don't like each other. They don't like how they talk, how they look. Your cells literally repel each other. Like, so like, your personality type and then like introvert versus extrovert. Like I don't like people and still I feel like I'm in a really good place now. I still, this is still my default. Like I hate everything and everyone, but it's also a personality type. And then these are the two danger steps. I think I want to leave. So this is thinking about suicide you don't want to be here anymore. And then the absolute worst is, I'm going to try. I'm going to try act on suicidal thoughts. And this thinking about it to actually trying is a massive escalation. And if this, if you've done this before, you need to get help um, immediately. Because if you're at this point, like... Um, like you're it's so bad that like you need to you're never going to get out of this this isn't going to stop like once you're here like thinking about it is bad but like actually trying is like there's just no there's no way you're going to heal out of this like and the the longer this goes on like we said it before it compounds on itself and it takes over your whole thought process so like People say, oh, it gets better. And like, I've said things like, um, that feeling of awfulness, it has peaks and valleys. Like there's periods where it, it's so bad and it could cause you to try to do something. But if you were to just wait it out, it won't be as bad. So if you can recognize that it's just peaking and be like, okay, I just need to get through this this peak, and then it won't be as bad. But, um, like, people will say uh, things will get better. Like, can they get better when you're just consumed in these last two steps, and there's no chance that you're going to give anything a try? And we'll, and we'll talk about how this relates to therapy and the different types of therapy. Like, are you going to want to talk about anything when you, you're in these last two steps? You know, like, so like if you're down here, I feel like you need antidepressants because your brain won't even let you consider anything at all. And then, and these images, it's kind of, it's funny, like we're in this like AI revolution and like you can read about like, neural nets and how they work like it's the same kind of system like you have the brain and then you have these receptors and pathways that you go down and they fire or they don't fire 
and they get reinforced. And eventually, certain types of thinking become deep trenches that you can only path through. So, like, if we just scribble on here, if we're starting here, like, if I'm like, I hate them. Something happened, I hate it. I hate them. Another situation, I hate it. I hate them. And they're just this... This path becomes so entrenched that there's no chance that your brain's going to go anywhere else. Like, it just keeps going back and forth in here. So, it, do you really have a chance of get, getting better when this is the only way your brain can go? And then a different... Um, visualization of it so like this is your brain and like these are the options this is your reaction to a situation like try don't like it hate 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 and this this just grows like if we get out our thing like this you just get more of these receptors. So if you think there's a probability of you going any of these ways, the number of hate receptors would just increase. And then there's just a 0% chance that your brain will do anything other than this. And it's like, can things get any better when you can't even give anything a try? Your brain literally can't get to this point because you've entrenched this thinking so strongly. And we'll get to um, talking about antidepressants, so how I perceive antidepressants, what they do. Like People say, oh, it's just masking the problem. Like The way I perceive antidepressants is like these deep trenches of... of receptors firing this gets loosened so there's a chance that you don't immediately go down this hate path and there's a chance that you can get to this try or don't like but I'll try you know you're not just stuck in this loop of hating everything and everyone which becomes so strong and it just takes over your whole life so that's that part, the pictures. So then, therapy, therapy with a therapist, therapist, cognitive brain therapy. So like, what is that? Like, it like it starts off bad because they have to say, "Oh, how are you today?" Like, I don't know. Like to me, this is like the worst question. Like, why do you think I'm here, man? Like, I mean, it's tough. Like, you got to say hello, but like again. Depending on how bad, which state are you in? Like someone asking, how are you when you're fucking here is just going to piss you off, man, right? Like, so as, as like a psychologist, like pro tip, like, <laughs> and like, um, from my own experience, how many therapists have you been to? I think it was like eight. Well, I went to a lot, man. And like, um, not all of them are good, and not uh, not all of them get along. Like they're obviously trained to be impersonal or whatever, but sometimes people just don't get along, right? They don't like the look of you. They don't like how you talk, and like if if you both of you just don't get along, it's just a waste of time, and like. You don't want to be battling, like, with the psychologist. Like, I did this because I'm an asshole. <laughs> like, and, like, I believe I can out-psychologist anyone. So, I would, I would literally battle with them. And, like, I would try to attack them. Like, that's how bad it is for me. But that's just, like, my personality type. This isn't useful, though. And it's something that I did, though. And, like... Um, I, I like. I don't recommend doing this. And obviously, if you're not getting along, try someone else. Like, 
And that's like with anything. Like you don't have to stick to this one person, even though this is so personal. And again, like what are you going to be talking about? You're going to be talking about your, your personal life, your parents' life, major events in your life, scenarios where you reacted to in situations. Like what did you do? Talking can be therapeutic. Like this... Depression manifests physically in the body, like, and depending on the severity, like, you might cry, you might burst into tears, like, I cried. Crying can be therapeutic by itself. You needed someone to talk to. Um, you needed to release these thoughts that manifest um, as physical stress in the body. Like, this can be a release. And this, is, this might be what you need. And depending on where you are on the scale, like, if, if you're in these lower levels, this might be enough. Maybe you just needed to say something. But again, if you're in these last two levels, do you really think talking is going to get you out of there? Like, I was already at the bottom level when I tried talking. And again, like we've said it before, like this just gets worse and worse and takes over your entire thought process. And like, can things get better? Can you even talk about it? Like, I, I wanted to battle with the psychologist. I didn't want to like talk about myself. I, I wanted to attack them. <laughs> like, I'm an asshole, right? Like, that's just... And again, it's like personality type and... and um, but this, this isn't useful. And like, if you're doing this, I think you need antidepressants. Like, you need to get out of this 100% controlled hate fucking um, brain pathway to even have a chance to be able to talk about stuff. And in retrospect, I don't know. I don't know if... CBT was useful to me. Like, I'm not a... I'm an introvert. I would be considered an introvert, but I don't really like that... That, um... That, uh... What do you call it? When, when you call someone... I don't really like that, because, again, you can be extroverted with people you like. Did this... Did this help me personally? I'm not sure. Like... But I, I'm not a... I'm not a... I don't need... I don't need, like, social interaction. Like, good social interaction is good, and I like it. But I don't need... I don't need any social interaction. Like, I, I don't... I don't need... Um, constant or just any type of... So, I don't need it. It's not something I need. So, I don't know... And again, it comes back to like how far along the scale you are. But like, depending on your personality and how bad your starting point is, like, obviously try this. But again, if you're at such a bad state on the scale, and obviously, I don't want anyone to just start taking antidepressants for no reason. Which I, me making this video, people are going to just jump straight on them and do insane dose. Don't do that. Like, you have to do this step. But at the same time, if you're already in these last two steps, like, it's going to be tough. And battling with the site, this is not useful. I did this, and it's not useful. I've had. A, <laughs> I've had a psychologist tell me to kill myself. I've had young, attractive psychologists flirt, like we flirt with each other. I've had older woman psychologist who wants to be your mother. It's just sick. This is like sick <laughs> interaction. Like, like, it's a very personal and vulnerable interaction and like bad stuff can happen. <laughs> so like... <laughs> You have to be aware of that. And again, obviously, not everyone gets along. Like, I'm pretty good at pissing people off. Like, so, if you're not... You have to be able to gel with the person. But it's not a friendship. So, you have to be careful. But so, 
keep trying. There's plenty of places you can go to. But then obviously the, the issue of money and cost and whether you can... Free, free you'll have the least choice, right? So that's like um, CBT. And then the part everyone cares about, antidepressants. Like, I'm pro-antidepressants, but I don't think you should just jump on them right now without thinking unless you're already in these last two steps. Because, again, at this point, your brain is so entrenched in a certain way of thinking that your body won't even let you try to change anything. And people will say, oh, you're just masking the problem. Like, I don't believe that. Like, and this is these pictures that I came up with, like, like, your brain has receptors, like, and you you create these receptors and they fire or they don't fire. And like, when certain things happen over and over, you build more of these receptors or less of a certain type. And if if you're in this loop of hating everything, you just build so many of these hate receptors that like, you're just entrenched and there's no chance that your brain's going to fire in any other way than I hate everything and everyone, regardless of your, like, your personality type. And once you're in here, there's just no chance that your brain's going to let you do anything else. So how I perceive antidepressants work is they loosen the bonds on these receptors and pathways. So there's a chance. There's a non-0% chance. It doesn't mean immediately there's a 100% chance. There's a chance, a small chance. And over time, and getting the right dose, etc., you can start getting to this try stage or getting lower than the current stage that you are. There's a chance that you're going to think about something in a different way. And that's the path to, to recovery, right? Like, and again, if you're in these last stages, like there's no way that you're just going to not think that way. You know, you need something to take, to make a difference. <laughs> so... You're going to take them. The first thing is you can't take it for one or two days and say, oh, it's good or bad. Like, this is the thing about, this is like the difference between like pharmaceutical drugs and like street drugs. Like, pharmaceutical drugs, the dosages are very controlled and there's testing. And antidepressants, the dose is small. It's not, it's not a hit of fucking cocaine or whatever, like straight into the blood. Like it takes time to build up in the system. So like I take um, fluoxetine Prozac. If I stop taking it today, the effect won't wear off um, for like a week or more. Like it builds up slow. It takes... For me, as a 100 kilo man, it, I think it takes five weeks before you can make judgment on whether this works or doesn't work. And this is a long time if you're, consider, you're in these stages, these worst stages, right? Like, but you have to give it time. You can't just take it for two days, have some stomach problems, which you probably will because it's fucking synthetic crap in the body. Oh, I've got a stomach ache. Fuck this. Like, you're putting something that's basically plastic into your body. Like, it's going to hurt. <laughs> it's going to hurt your body. But, like, you have to give it time. And this is a problem, not only because it's a long time, but if you think it's not doing anything, you then have to flush it out of your body before you can try another one. You can't just jump to another a different antidepressant and then make judgment after two days. Like, 
you ha- you've got to give it time and that can be a problem again when you, if you're in these last two steps again this is I don't have a solution if you have no one and you start to, this is this is dangerous this stuff is dangerous like these these drugs like I talk about like they loosen your bonds but loosening your bonds could be loosening bonds to do something permanent or worse. I personally did not have... I never made a, a, an attempt after my failed attempt after taking anti I didn't have that issue. But, um, I mean, it could happen. And that's why you need... You need someone who's, like, watching you. <laughs> because... Again, like these are drugs that can that do things. Like they they loosen your your inhibition on behavior. So like these are dangerous and I don't think anyone should just take them. But I think if you're in these last two steps, like I don't think you can just wait it out or like talk it out or something. I feel like if it's that bad, like you need this. Uh, we'll talk about the side effects in a second. And if you've got substance abuse issues, like, it's tough, man. Like, I don't have substance abuse issues. Um, and, um, and like, situations. Like, can you be in a situation where people are doing maybe recreational drugs and not do them. Like, if someone else is doing it, you have to do it. Like, vaping, or fucking marijuana, or, like, can someone come up to you and offer you marijuana, and you say no? Like, I got offered fucking (laughs) marijuana the other week outside the shopping centre. In Australia, it's still, it's not legal. Like, those sorts of situations, like, if you have substance abuse issues, like, it's tough. Like, I don't know, again, you're going to need someone to talk to but they do have obviously the call lines and all that like and uh, there was just one other thing we were going to say substance abuse issues Uh, I've I've forgotten what I was going to say but yeah and then don't don't combine antidepressants with alcohol like you will get absolutely annihilated and it it changes it changes the way it hits you like when i first um drank like the the rate at which you get intoxicated initially it wasn't gradual it was like nothing 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 and then all of a sudden you're just gone and you're blackout drunk like i've never been blackout drunk and people will say oh, you just don't drink enough like is a liter of vodka not enough? Like, people massively overstate how much they drink. It's like, you know those streamers who, like, drink on stream and, like, claim to be... They're, they're usually not even drinking. It's usually, like, water. They're just pretending. Like, people massively overstate how much they drink. But you will get blackout drunk on antidepressants if you've never been... Um, blackout drunk and it'll hit you all at once like the way it affects you is different but that's just like um, yeah that's just an antidepressant like thing so then side effects like minor initial digestion this is in like the first week obviously you're putting something synthetic chemicals into your body like it's going to it's going to um, fuck with your stomach. Like either like weird rumbling or aches or gas or whatever. Uh, this is These are obviously personal to me. Sweating. Like I had with metazapine insane, insane sweating. And not like, oh, you just went for a jog sweat. I mean, you went to sleep, you wake up underwater... Like, you're, if, you're, if you're wearing it soaked, the sheets are soaked, the covers are soaked, 
you can't go back to bed in the same bed. Like, it's so, it's so soaked. Like, you literally can't go back to bed in that same bed. <laughs> so, that was bad. And, like, um, I had, um, like, your body feels like it's cooking. Like, you, you have hot flushes. So, like, I can't take, like, hot showers, otherwise I just start sweating or whatever. Like, it just fucks up your entire, like, temperature regulation. Um, I had a few, like, um, insane disorientating waking up in the middle of the night. Like, I had to go to the toilet, and I was, like, dizzy, and I was, like, holding onto the walls trying to... (laughs) trying to get to the toilet, <laughs> like, it was just bizarre, man, <laughs> like, uh, but I, I haven't, haven't had that, I've been on them for years now, so, like, I don't have any of this now, but, like, the first few weeks and months, that you have these weird things, um, obviously, inhibition release, like, you might say or do things, because, again, you don't have the same bonds on your receptors. So, like, shit when your brain will just fire. Like, a a stupid example is, like, you're at the shopping center queuing to pay and, like, someone's in front of you and they drop something. And I'm an asshole. And in my head, I'm thinking, like, you fucking idiot, you just dropped something. But I'll I'll say it out loud. (laughs) And then they look at you and you're like, oh, shit, like... You just you just say things or you just do things like these these are dangerous um dangerous drugs so like you got to be careful um and then dreams like you have the most insane dreams that like and they don't register you don't wake up and think what a fucked up dream it registers as a memory it's it's bizarre man like Remember that time when Australia was attacked by China and the 16th century warships while you escaped with your Korean wife? Uh, that didn't actually happen. That was a dream. Like, but it's so it's so vivid and and realistic and like it's like a movie. Like, like it's insane, man. <laughs> like, like I didn't. I had dreams like this as a kid, but I think it's like. Again, your brain is like unlocked from like this this type of thinking. And like I don't know, I think it's getting back to that child mind where it's still malleable. Like the whole point of antidepressants is getting your brain back to a point where it can change. You're not stuck in these these pathways. But um I don't want to sound too pro because these are dangerous things and I don't think you should just willy-nilly go on whatever and order it off the internet. So, how long have we been going for? So then we can talk about my actual dose. So, and you can compare this to you. Like, I'm a 100 kilo man and I take 40 of fluoxetine, Prozac, which is two tablets, and metazapine, a 40 milligram tablet at night. I guess I should put night. And this is morning. So fluoxetine in the morning, metazapine at night. Metazapine helps with sleep, but this shit, this shit will make you eat. Like, Another thing is, like, um, appetite. Like, I'm not sure whether I, uh, like, um, what's it called? Like, I underate. Like, you, you, not because of, like, body dysmorphia or anything, but, like, just autism. Like, you don't have time to eat. Like, you're, you're so focused on, like, whatever you're autistically autismoing about. Like, you don't want to eat. You just want to keep doing whatever you were doing. Reading or or doing whatever project, or playing a game, or whatever, like, you just, you just locked in on that, and you just don't eat, so metazapine helps with, um, appetite, and, and sleep, and sleep is such a massive change for me, that it makes me wonder how much of this depression was actually based on sleep, rather than anything else, 
And then fluoxetine to me is the the one that does that loosens the bonds on your the receptors in your brain. And combining these two together seems to make them work better. But that that could just be for me. So obviously there's hundreds of different drugs and it takes time to to try them and you want to use something that works for you. So you can't just say, oh, it works for me, so it should work for you. Like the brain is obviously complicated. It fucks up in all different matters. And then obviously the dose for my body weight. So if you're already on something like this and you're taking more than me and you're smaller than me, then that's kind of weird, right? And then there'll be some some psychiatrists that will like want to double the dose, just double the dose until something happens. But like that's a dangerous game to play. So yeah, fluoxetine, Prozac, receptor bonds, and then metazapine is sleep and appetite. And we're actually feeling really good to the point that we'd consider going off. But like, just the other week, I forgot to um, I forgot to buy uh, the new script two days in a row, and then it was a three day weekend, four day weekend. So I didn't take it. I had no. I had nothing to take. So I was off at cold turkey for seven days. Like my sleep dies instantly. Like it's so bad that like. I don't think I can go off metazapine. Like, the effect that this has on sleep is both um, sleep resilience, so how long do you stay asleep, how rested you feel when you wake up. Um, it's just, it's just night and day. Like, there's no diff. I don't, uh, I don't know. Like, if it was. If it was better to be off them, I feel like you should feel you should feel better as soon as you stop taking it, right? Like if it was if it was like temporary or whatever. But like my sleep is so unbelievably bad and it just once my sleep goes, like your mood is just gone. You know, like there's you're just angry. Like you just feel like shit. So like without this for sleep it just sends you right back down and I don't know, like this is just, it works for me but like as soon as I don't take this, my sleep is so bad. It's fucking awful. Like you, instead of sleeping your eight, eight hours or whatever, you sleep like four hours, you wake up, you're, you're awake, you don't want to sleep but you feel like absolute shit. <laughs> so it's just weird like, and I've been off I've been off um, drugs completely, antidepressants completely, so many times, and it's always worse. Like, the sleep is so bad, so I don't know, I don't know like, if I could ever go off it. And one thing I want to do is um, get a sleep study, but it's not that easy because there's like six-month fucking waiting lists and then when you do the sleep study, they have to, they put the fucking robot suit on you with all the fucking circuits connected to you. Like, it tracks whether you're moving in your sleep, whether you're, you're breathing, like it, your, your brain waves. Like, you have to put on a whole fucking robot suit. It's a whole, like, thing. So it's, I want to get a sleep study done, but there's massive waiting lists and, um, it's a whole fucking thing that you have to do. But yeah, like my sleep is so... I have... If I have any anxieties, it's fucking sleep anxiety. Like I don't want to try sleep until I feel, you know, the... You know, like you... <laughs> it's fucking bad. Like this is the biggest part. Like in terms of my mental state, like I feel really good. But like my sleep is just so bad if I go off, that I don't know if I can go off, even though I feel so good. 
so that's where I'm, I'm at with that. Um, other antidepressants I've taken, obviously there's heaps out there, but again, like it takes weeks for them to start doing, to, to be able to make judgment. And then if you want to, if you don't like it, it takes time to flush it out. I'm obviously like crazy um, professional taker. So I can, I can cut it cold turkey. I don't recommend anyone does that. But, and also fasting is good because then your body just burns through it like really quickly. But um, like, I don't recommend anyone goes cold turkey. You should taper, taper off. Like you can have like crazy brain zaps where like your brain is like, it feels like there's like electric currents like zapping in your brain when you're like, when you try to go off at cold turkey. It's, I don't recommend it, but like, I'm obviously crazy that like I can, um, I want to do it the hardest, fastest way, right? But um, we've taken venlafaxine. These are this is all several years ago, so I don't even remember that well. But like, I remember venlafaxine just had not as strong effect as fluoxetine, and I think the side effects were worse. Like your I think this, I still felt extremely low energy on this. So, um, I didn't feel like this was good for me. I've tried Dothep. This shit, all this did to me was dry my eyes and mouth like paper. Like, I couldn't fucking open and close my eyes. They were so dry. <laughs> I had to start using eye drops. And like my mouth and throat, like it just dried up the the water in my fucking eyes, and um and I I didn't feel like there was any like psychological effect. I just felt it just took the water out of my eyes, and so this is just an example of what some of these drugs can do to you. Like, and then Lamotrine, was this Valdoxin? Like, obviously, there's the chemical. The chemical name, like fluoxetine, then the brand is like um, Prozac or whatever. Like, I remember taking this. I don't think I took this for long enough to make a judgment on it. So again, like, you can't just take these things for like two days or a week or two weeks and say, oh, it's good or bad. Like, it takes time. <laughs> and then... um. Lastly, just some um, lifestyle habits. Like, when when you're in a bad um, a bad peak, because I feel like these those feelings can have peaks and valleys. Like, you have to recognize if if you're just peaking, you know. Like that peak can feel so bad that you make a decision that could be permanent. But if you can recognize that it's just a peak that you need to get through, um, there'll be a time in the future that it's not as bad. And then that's the point where you can start making changes, right? Um, and then basic advice, like sunlight is good. Like, um, I actually think v vitamin D can help, but get a blood test. Like I was low on vitamin D and started taking vitamin D, but obviously the sun is just better. And I, I don't take vitamin D anymore, and I, I now spend time outside. And if you've got no reason to be outside, just go outside to eat your lunch and check Reddit or something. And this, this isn't as useful for people not in Australia or in like a desert, because... In Australia, in peak sun, you can get sunburnt in like two minutes, literally. Like you park at the shops, walk to the sun, to the shopping center. And during that walk, if it's middle of the day, peak sun, 14 UV, you will get sunburnt. <laughs> like it's fucking dangerous. But like everywhere else, you don't have such a death laser. So like check the UV, like between like four and four and five is like good 
but some places don't even reach four and five. So like, even though you're outside, you're not even getting any sun. Like, <laughs> so um, not the the best advice depending on where you live. And yeah, vit D. I think vit D does help, but it's obviously better to just get actual sun. And if you have no reason to be in the sun, then like just eat your lunch and check Reddit or whatever stuff that you check on the internet, on your phone or whatever, just sit, go to a park or something, I don't know, um, and sleep, like, I've done, I've done the fucking awful non-24 hour sleep, so like, when you're at your worst, you're hating everything and you're sleeping 12 hours and you're awake for like, awake but like in bed or whatever like 16 hours so the total time is like 28 hour cycle which is longer than a day which means you're constantly cycling in and out of day i don't recommend living like that man it's fucking awful like i've done it and like like um like we we were lifting like uh, exercising we would exercise at like 3 a.m. It was just fucked up, man. Like, <laughs> like, um, but obviously, when you're at your worst, you just need, you need time. You need time. You have to give yourself time. And when it's really bad, you, you have to, you have to just not do anything. You just have to lie there for 20, 12 hours or whatever when it's peaking but as soon as you're not feeling that bad like try to get out of this non-24 hour sleep cycle like, it's just fucked up man it it really doesn't help like i've done it and it's 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 fucking bad man. <laughs> like obviously when you're at your worst you need to give yourself time to um to recover but like long term this 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 does not help you at all and then um in terms of your life like your work or whatever like it doesn't matter how much money you make if you hate it like your job like i've been working this job i don't have more money now than i've ever had and I burnt a shitload of money during a sabbatical. But like, it doesn't matter if you hate it, you know? Like, you have to look at your life. Is this benefiting me? Am I coming home and just withdrawing? Am I recharging? Like, I guess like, one picture we didn't... We can do this live. Shit. Let's just open a new paint. One picture we didn't do <laughs> that we realized we can do is like your life trajectory. Like if we do like a graph, like green. So obviously the optimal life is just one fucking upward trajectory, your life just gets better every day. And like, even better would be like, exponential. So like, <laughs> but obviously this is extremely hard. Like the only person I know, like, is like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, you can read Arnold Schwarzenegger's biography. Like, it's hard to read, man. Like, there's never a point where he was down or someone beat him or like, he lost, like, his life is just one upward trajectory, you know, like, came from nothing, Austria, champion, bodybuilder, fucking businessman, fucking governor, uh, movie star, and then governor, like, there's just, it's just one, <laughs> it's just one upward trajectory, right, but if we talk about, like, actual, an actual life, ideally, it's something like this, so there's up and downs, but there's still an upward trajectory, right? Your life is improving, but obviously it has the 
the the peaks and downs when when stuff happens, right? But even that is not very realistic, right? So obviously the the gradient is going to be like less and you don't want to be you don't want to be like not improving at all. So like a straight line. So no no net improvement with time. Happiness. We can't really like no improvement, but the like that's probably what most people's lives are like. But you wanna you wanna have an upward trajectory, right? And then obviously, the worst is like the usual um, ups and downs, but trending downwards. So that's you wanna avoid that, right? So that's just a basic um like goal for your life, right? Like so like look it's like your like your profession, your behavior, like what do you do? Is it good for you, you know? Like are you able to it's like my hobby is obviously computers, tech and games, but like I don't think I can work in computing tech. Like I I have a software engineering degree, but like Sitting in an office surrounded by idiots working on software that doesn't is not useful to anyone. Like we're living in this weird time where like we make movies about tech autocratic future and like that's as entertainment, but like that's exactly where we're headed. Like it's fucked up, man. Like I don't know if I can work in it. And like sitting in an office eight hours plus a day surrounded by idiots, like I'm not excited about that. And then we're doing this like practical physical work where you have like feedback and you're outside. Like, if you're not happy, it doesn't matter how much you make, right? Like, so you have to like look at your hobbies and um and see whether it's actually helping or benefiting your life. Um, is there anything else? Obviously, we just kind of YOLO'd this. We we just want to make some video. Because I feel like we're being dishonest by branding ourselves as the depressed man still. So that's just basic lifestyle habits. <laughs> I guess we just do the summary and that's it. So what I, what I don't want to happen is just people watch this and then, oh, I'm going to start taking antidepressants. <laughs> I'm pro... I'm pro antidepressants, but again, like, only if you're in these two worst categories, and it's been going on, because I think, at that point, there's no chance that you will, your brain doesn't let you think in any other way, and obviously, try the normal therapy, again, can you talk to someone when you're just constantly going back to this, I hate everything. And you have to be honest with yourself. You have to admit it to yourself. And yeah, like, uh, I hope that, um, I hope that helps. I feel it's better to just talk. I don't like, don't talk about it. I'm, I'm more about like, talk about it than not talk about it. <laughs> even if it's rushed or crappy or whatever, this is just my opinion and we'll probably think of things we could have said or didn't or didn't say or whatever, but I'd just rather have this out there and we're kind of going to rebrand ourselves as the uplifted man now. Like, it is possible to come out of a <laughs> deep depression. Like, it was bad. Like, don't get me... Like, people will say, oh, what, what, what? what was so bad, like, trust me, it was bad, and it doesn't even matter what it is, like, if it's affecting your life, uh, ability to, to function, like, that's all that matters, so, um, yeah, there, there are systems to help you, you just have to try, and obviously, if you, if you can't, 
if it's so bad that you're stuck in these um these pathways like how can it get better if you're just stuck and obviously like I can't tell you that it will get better and um and that there's meaning or purpose to life like you have to create that <laughs> but like do you think you have any chance of doing that when you're in this um this hate loop and like that's another thing we didn't mention with like uh CBT type therapy talking therapy is like imagine someone saying asking you about life goals like what what's some of your goals when you're like here man when you're in this these last two steps and someone's asking you oh what are, what are some goals in your life like fuck off man like you know what i mean like you got to like obviously they don't know how bad it is they're trying to figure it out as they're talking to you but again like the biggest thing is can things get better when you can't even let anyone try like you, yourself like you can't even think in any other way you know like so if you're at this point like therapy like how can it help you and it's it's true and again i would just stress like um you don't want to battle with the psychologist like i did this and it, it's not useful at all <laughs> like you get the fucking victory you you piss them off like uh, but like you're not helping it doesn't help anyone so yeah like i think we're going to end it there like obviously we just rushed we just wanted to get this out it's better to talk about it than not so until the next time uh goodbye and good luck i guess <laughs> oh my god